ring-a-ding-ding. We've got a brand new heavyweight fight to get your blood flowing. Two bears, each fearsome in their own right, going head-to-head -head in the Thunderdome. One hails from thousands of years ago and found a way to become one of the largest terrestrial carnivores ever to exist. The other is still around today and it's hungry for a win, especially considering how scarce its prey can be these days. Who will come out on top? Only one way to find out. Hello fellow friends and philosophers and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be asking a very combative question. What if the short-faced bear fought a polar bear? I can barely handle the excitement. Before we get going, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more Ursa undertaking. Perfect, let's get ready to rumble. Out of the gate, one bear has an obvious advantage, the polar bear. Even before taking into account size or combat habits is still around today. Big upside there, huh? It's a lot easier to win a fight if you're alive and your opponent isn't, right? That's how I win most of my fights, by picking rivals who have already departed from our earthly plane. Not much fighting to be done when your body isn't animated. Sheesh, rough start. Of course, that is the strictly logical and realistic approach to take, but we don't need sheer logic and reason where we're going now, do we? The point of this video is to pit two fearsome beasts against one another, and not get all pedantic and claim that only one is extinct. So in the interest of a fair fight and an interesting video, we'll assume that these bears will be able to meet each other in the ring in tip-top shape. We'll take a look at a couple different scenarios to give each predator an advantage, and then also take a look at a more neutral situation. After that, we'll have a pretty good idea of what might happen if these two bears clash. Let's start by taking a look at some bear traits. The short-faced bear is an extinct species that lived in North America during the Pleistocene Epoch. It likely lived around 11,000 years ago. It seems to have gone extinct thanks to a large-scale bout of global cooling, likely making it difficult to procure prey. There are two types of short-faced bears, known as Arctotus pristinus and Simus. Simus are the bigger of the two, so we'll focus on those for the fight. As we said earlier, they were found in North America, especially in California. These bears were big, if you didn't already pick up on that. Like, really big. Most would range between 900 and 950 kilograms, but some of the biggest boys managed to rack up to 1,200 kilos. Holy smokes, that is quite literally a ton of bear. Standing up straight, these large lads could measure up to three meters tall, and even when on all fours, they would be standing at around the same height as an adult human. So yes, these bears could dunk while standing. In that regard, I think they've already won the fight, but stick with me. The short-faced bear's diet is up in the air, as many different researchers have come up with their own theories. Seeing as it went extinct thousands of years ago, we have to stick with guesses. Some seem to think that it was able to run down fast prey thanks to its long legs. By reaching speeds of 50 to 70 kilometers per hour, it might have hunted down wild horses, antelopes, and even mammoths. However, its bone structure doesn't necessarily allow for the quick lateral movement of other such predators, so the theory is questionable. Others claim that they might have been opportunistic omnivores, eating whatever they could find, be it plant or animal. Their huge size would have helped with this, as they could scare off other predators and potentially scavenge whatever they'd been eating. It really is hard to say. Now, let's take a look at the competitor in the other corner. Ursus maritimus, better known as the polar bear, gets its name from the location that it can be found, the Maritimes. The bear is found at sea in the Arctic Circle, living off of sea ice. Weighing in at anywhere between 350 and 700 kilograms, it is definitely big, but not as big as its short-faced foe. Standing up straight, it clocks in at 2.5 meters, sometimes three. On all fours, it measures about a foot shorter than its Californian foe. Thanks to it being readily available for study, we know much more about this particular bear's diet. It is a hyper-carnivorous being, eating mostly seals that it finds on the sea ice. If it can't find any to eat, a polar bear will often live off stored fat for extended periods of time. This is becoming increasingly common as sea ice disappears. The gradual warming of the oceans resulting in sea ice loss means that polar bears have limited space to hunt and limited prey to find. Thanks to this, the species is considered endangered. Now that we've got the base facts, we can move on to combat. In order to keep things fair, I'll consider a couple different scenarios. In the first situation, we'll say that a polar bear has managed to find itself in California, home of the short-faced bear. In the lovely coastal heat, it doesn't stand much of a chance. After the bell rings, it probably lights out for our white-furred fighter. Try as they might, there's almost no way that a polar bear could take down a beast that is almost 50% bigger. Even at peak fighting capacity, full of seal meat, the smaller, cold-adapted bear would be crushed. The heat wouldn't be much help either. So round one goes to the short-faced bear. 
Round two, however, would take place in the Arctic Circle. Here, Mr. Shortface is at a major disadvantage. It's cold, it's wet, and it's barren. Perfect for a polar bear, disorienting and deadly for a landlubber. If the polar bear played its cards right in this environment, it would take an easy victory. By avoiding a head-on confrontation at first and allowing the short-faced bear to succumb to the elements, the polar bear could walk away victorious. The cold would weaken the bigger bear, and if at any point they ended up in the icy waters, it would be game over. Round two goes to the polar bear. Final round is a hackneyed attempt to have a fair and balanced fight, no environmental advantages. I guess that would mean putting the two bears in the grid and lowering the thermostat to like 10 degrees Celsius. That way, any environmental advantage would be mitigated and we could all check out the frame data afterwards. In a relatively fair fight, you'd have to lean towards the bigger bear taking the title. With huge limbs and an astronomical weight, the short-faced bear would absolutely slam a polar bear. Sure, the initial wrestling would be interesting and polar bears are known for play fighting, but in the end, the bigger body wins. Final score, two to one, short-faced bear. In a perfect world, bears would never have to fight. They would just walk around, eating stuff and mauling hikers. And what a world that would be. Unfortunately, our world isn't perfect. Bears do fight, and some have gone extinct. We may never see what an interaction between a polar bear and a short-faced bear would really be like, and that breaks my heart. But we can keep thinking and theorizing and creating scenarios to fill the hole that the lack of short-faced bears has left. So what did you think of the video? Do you agree with my simulation? Would you take those odds? What kind of bear would make the ultimate fighter? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more snide ones from What If The Titano Boa Existed Today. Disco Saturn loves to do subtitled comedies and other things 24-7 says if Titano Boa existed today, it would swallow a plane that big. Now Samuel L. Jackson's got a way bigger snake to handle. I've had it with this motherfucking plane and this motherfucking snake. Poetry. Moon Phases says it would be good cash for snakeskin sellers. Its size doesn't matter, one bullet to the head would be enough to end this giant worm. I mean, if you can manage to get the shot off before it creeps up on you and crushes your bones, I guess. Rodent Queen 26 says, sorry, but this giant snake has to go. Throw it in a volcano. This thing needs to stay extinct. Only strict large sea serpents are allowed to stay around. All this coming from a rodent queen. Makes sense, I guess. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor II says, Hello, my subjects. Holy smokes, the real Queen Elizabeth. What a treat. And Zach Fox says, What if all seven billions had to take a crap all at once? Plumbers around the world would become heroes. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I sneak out of prison, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more catastrophic clashes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.